error handling in JavaScript. In JavaScript, the terminology that is used when referring to errors and error handling is throw, try, and catch. The try statement can be used to test a block of code for errors while the code is being executed. The catch statement is used to catch any error that occurs in the try block and to execute code to handle it. In JavaScript, the syntax for try and catch is as shown here, try and catch the error. When an error occurs the, and JavaScript generates an error message, we say that JavaScript will throw an error and custom errors can be created by using the throw statement. Now to execute this piece of code here, uh, we're going to save it as JS error handling onehtml and I'm using an editor called Notepad++. So I'm going to switch over to a browser and I'm going to open it in the browser and you'll see that the error message that's caught from the try block is uh, that the function AAA alert is not defined. So if we switch back to the code, we'll see that um, there was a programmer error that occurred here where this should have been spelled A-L-E-R-T for an, the alert function. And um, that error was caught and um, an error message was displayed when the program was run in the browser. So if we delete the two extra A's there and call the function by its proper name, alert, uh, what we expect to see when we run the program now, so we'll save it and switch over to the browser, refresh the browser and what happens is that the er there's no error and the program behaves as expected. Hello and welcome. Now we're going to move on to uh, form validation. So I'm going to open a file here called JS error handling 2.html and it's an example of form validation in JavaScript. So data on forms can be validated by JavaScript so that only valid data is sent off to the web server for processing. Form validation can be used to check a form to ensure that data was entered into every form field that required it. It can also be used to check that the data entered is of the correct type and value. In this example, we have a user input of a number between uh, 3 and 6 that's required. And the, the, there's a button that when the user clicks on the button, then form validation occurs. So this code is an example of how a number might be validated by a web client using JavaScript. The function called test input checks if the entry is blank, um, if it is not a number, um, if it is within the range that's expected. Um, and for each of those, it will throw an error, uh, a custom error, if any of them fail. And it also uses a catch statement uh, to catch the error. Now in JavaScript, there's also something called finally. The finally statement lets you execute code after try and catch, regardless of the result. So we'll just uh, look at the end of the script here and that's the extent of the code for this web page. So as I said we have saved it here as JS error handling 2.html. So I'm going to open the browser and um, see what how it behaves. So we're prompted to enter a number between 3 and 6. 
So let's say we just, the user presses the enter button, um, what do we expect? Okay, so we have a uh, message, input is, en input is empty, please try again. Okay, a number between 3 and 6, that's tested for alphanumerics. Um, a, 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 it's not a number, please try again. Okay, let's try it for uh, a big number. Input is too high. So these are all validation messages that are thrown. They're custom messages that are thrown. Um, they're caught and displayed to the user. Let's enter uh, the number one. Input is too low, so that's a different error message again. So let's enter uh, four. And as you'd expect, um, there's no error message. Four is an acceptable number. Um, and so the program, program behaves as expected. So as you can see, JavaScript throws errors. When an error occurs, JavaScript will normally stop and generate an error message. And the technical term for this is that JavaScript will throw an exception or throw an error.